So we're now at the point where we want to be able to click on the screen and have the ball be released. This might sound like it's going to be pretty difficult, but Phaser is actually doing a lot of the work behind the scenes for us. So if we come over to our game.js file, let's go up to when we first of all start to kind of initialize anything. So this is just up here after we've set everything up. Now what we're going to do is a similar thing that we did inside of our panel. We're going to say this game input, but we're going to set an event handler on on down, which basically means when we click. What we then do is we call a method. In this case, I'm going to call this release ball and we pass a reference to the current game into here. So let's go ahead and create the release ball method and we'll see what happens when we go ahead and click. So we're in our game. I click and we see sure enough test console log now. Now, how are we going to release the ball? That is the question. Well, let's first of all, just say this ball on paddle equals false and just see what happens. Let's give this a refresh and click. Notice that this goes ahead and unsticks. That's the first thing that we need to do, because of course, once we've gone ahead and released the ball, we don't want it to stick to the paddle or it's just not going to move anywhere. Now that's the first step. But now what we need to do is control the velocity on the X and Y axis of the ball. Now you can go ahead and play around with this to increase uh, how fast it moves. But I'm going to go ahead and say this ball body velocity and I'm going to set on the X axis. In fact, let's start with the Y axis just so we can see this working to minus 300. So what we can now do is go ahead and click to release the ball. You can see that's going to go and fire up. It's going to bounce on all edges of the world. It's not going to interact with the paddle yet. So if you notice, if this goes down, it's not interacting with the paddle. Of course, it's not interacting with any of the bricks as well, but we have a good start. Now, if I go ahead and duplicate this and set the velocity on the X axis, I can set this to something like minus 20. You could bump it up as high as minus 100 if you wanted to. All this is going to do is it's going to give it a little bit of variation. So when I click, this is now going a very slight angle uh, on the X axis, or of course, minus X axis. So it's going to the left hand side. So that's something that you can add if you don't want this to just bounce straight up. Uh, just to add a little bit of variation. And of course, you could generate a random number there as well if you wanted to. OK, so the other, only other thing that we want to do in this part now that we've got this ball going is when I go ahead and click again, notice that this is just resetting that velocity and it's going ahead and pushing it back up again. Now, we don't want that to happen because people could obviously use this to cheat. So what we want to do is inside of release ball, we want a little check in here to see if the ball isn't on the paddle we don't want to release the ball. That's as simple as saying this ball on paddle, checking if it's false and going ahead and returning. So now if I go ahead and give this a refresh and I click, I can't re-click to uh, increase the velocity on the X axis to push that back upwards. So that is pretty much it. We now have a ball that's going ahead and floating around the world. Remember that the reason that this works is ball.js has collide world bound and check world bound set to true. If I go ahead and get rid of this, notice what happens. I'm going to go ahead and click and we'll see that this will literally just go up and pretty much just disappear. So that's why we added that earlier. And of course, we set the body bounce as well. So if I get rid of this, notice that when I click, that's going to go ahead and just stick like that. So there we go. If I go ahead and uh, uncomment that, we now have a ball that can move around and we are going to move on to the next part where we can look at collision detection with our paddle and our bricks.